Today, we are talking about what the ABCs of behavior are. In behavior analysis, we love our acronyms. ABCs is one of them. We're going to talk about how you can take ABC data, why it's so important, and so much more. So have you ever been in a classroom situation where, you know, you're consulting to a teacher and the teacher says, well, you know, I've got this behavior and someone came in and told me to fill out ABC charts and you look at them and there's piles, it's reams and reams of data. And you go, what? Um, That's happened to me before. It happened to me, unfortunately, way too many times. And, you know, as an ABA consultant, I love seeing data, but sometimes too much data can also be overwhelming. And I feel terrible for these teachers because they're filling out these ABC charts because someone told them to, they don't know why they're filling them out and they have them for months on end. Um, So today we're going to tell you about, you know, why that's not necessary. And I've come into places where ABC data was almost like a journal. They, on one incident of behavior in the A section, I was getting, you know, what happened when they woke up in the morning and why they may have been in a bad mood and what made them anxious so that at 4 p.m. I understood possibly what could have triggered that behavior. And that's definitely not what we mean when we talk about collecting ABC data. Data is supposed to make our lives a little bit easier so that we can make database decisions. It is not meant to make our lives more challenging and especially not the people who are supposed to be taking the data. So let's start. What do we mean when we say ABC data? Um, ABC stands for antecedent behavior and consequence. And when we talk about behavior, we always refer to the environment and what's happening around the behavior. So behaviors don't happen in a vacuum. They don't happen for no reason. There's always something that happens to trigger a behavior. And there's always something that happens after a behavior that makes it either more likely or less likely for it to happen again in the future. So the thing that happens right before the behavior is called the antecedent. And when we collect ABC data, we really just want to know what happened exactly right before. We don't need to know, well, they came in from recess and their boots were wet and they didn't like it, so they wanted to put them away. No, no, no. We just want to know, teacher told him to sit down. That is a perfect antecedent. If the behavior happens right after that, maybe he had a meltdown, maybe he threw something, he didn't want to sit down, and then that would be what we record as the behavior. Student ripped up the paper. That is a great description of a behavior. And the consequence is the same idea. What happened exactly after that behavior? So if if the behavior is that the student ripped up the paper, the consequence that we want to know is what happened right after. Did the teacher come over and take the paper away? Did the other students laugh? Um, Was he asked to leave the room? A very basic consequence. We don't need to also then know when he went home later that day, you know, the, the mother told him how awful that was not important for these purposes. So when we talk about ABC data, we really just want to know what happened right before the behavior as the antecedent, describe what the behavior looked like. Very often we'll also include a duration there. How long did it last for if that's relevant? And then the consequence would be what happened right after that behavior. And, you know, the way to put together an ABC chart can simply be, you know, putting three columns on a piece of paper and writing things down like that. However, like Shira said, that's when you seem to get these paragraphs of responses. And, you know, that can be great for a teacher because they really want to do that. But that can also be awful for a teacher because the teacher has a class of lots of students and they don't have time to do that. So oftentimes, you know, we'll put together a checklist. So Shira and I will put together a checklist. We'll interview the teacher and say, okay, let's start with the behavior. What does the behavior look like? And we put together, say, five checkpoints for behavior and the teacher can come along and just check, 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 depending on what that behavior happened or what behavior happened. Um, Same thing for antecedent. You know, we talk to the teacher and typically we want to see in the antecedent, we want to see what the triggers are. So we see, talk to the teacher and say, well, what are the most common triggers in your classroom for this behavior? Um, But there may be some the teacher doesn't think about. So, you know, we'll put down some more things like, um, you know, was there a demand given? Uh, Was it almost recess time? Was it a transition? Um, Did a new student come into the classroom? Did the student have to wait, et cetera, et cetera? 
And we put all of that down in the antecedent. So again, check, check, check. So that can be really nice and simple. Um, as well as, like Shira said, you don't get reams of information. I do care, you know, if the student didn't get any sleep that night, but I really care more about, you know, was a demand given? Uh, did the student have to wait? Was it during a transition time? That is the most important information. So that's what I'm going to put on there so people can check it off. Likewise with a consequence, right? You know, with a consequence condition, um, what happened? Did, you know, uh, a lecture occur afterwards? Oh, you shouldn't do that. You better keep your hands to yourself. How often does that happen, right? Um, or, you know, was the behavior ignored? Um, was the behavior redirected to something else? Was a peer given attention, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so check, check, check. And that's what an ABC data sheet can look like so that it can be kept nice and simple. And while we love recording data, um, we don't record data for no reason. And we always choose the form of data that's going to help us make the most informed decisions. So why would we choose ABC data? Um, well, it's a really good place to start when we're talking about challenging behavior. So if we get somebody asking for, you know, help with a challenging behavior that needs to be decreased or a classroom that's struggling or a parent that's struggling with a challenging behavior, the first thing that we need to know is to collect information about that behavior. And the best way to collect that information is through ABC data because it gives us information about potential functions of the behavior, what's triggering the behavior, and what might be reinforcing or punishing the behavior after. So if we're looking to, um, as part of a functional assessment, look at decreasing a challenging behavior, we would first define that behavior that we're looking to decrease and say we're now collecting data on hitting, for example, and what exactly that looks like as hitting. Is it a slap? Is it a punch? Is it, you know, to appear? What that looks like? And then ask the people in that environment to start collecting the ABC data. Um, and we do that for a couple of days so that it gives us information about the potential function. Very often, just by recording that ABC data, we can start to understand what's in it for the child. Why are they engaging in this behavior? And sometimes just by looking at the antecedents and the consequences, it can be very clear that it always happens during a certain demand or it always happens during a certain time of day. So it's the first step in trying to understand the function of that behavior. And then that's all we need the ABC data for. Once we've understood the behavior and have a hypothesis about the function, we're going to transition into a different type of behavior because at that point, a different type of data collection, because at that point, we're going to start intervening on potential strategies, ways to replace the challenging behavior, um, function-based intervention. And then we don't need ABC data anymore. We're going to start tracking the frequency and or the duration of the behavior to know if some of our interventions are working or not. Um, sometimes, you know, staff forget to drop that ABC collection and it becomes very overwhelming because if a behavior is happening 10 times a day, high frequency or high duration, um, and you're all you're thinking about is, well, now I have to record this 10 times a day, it becomes very overwhelming. So our recommendation is only use that ABC data when you're trying to figure out the function, when you're trying to understand the behavior for those first few couple of days, that first step of a functional assessment. And once you understand it and you're intervening on the behavior, you don't need to collect that ABC data anymore. You can move into frequency, duration, partial interval recording, whole interval recording, any one of those that are a lot less cumbersome and easier to collect. And that is such a key point, Shira. Like I said before, you know, when I walk into a classroom and I've got reams of data, ABC data, it's really overwhelming, not only for the teacher to collect that data, but also for me to have to go through and read all that data. So, you know, and it's not necessary. So as soon as you know the function of that behavior, you can terminate an ABC data collection chart and go on to something else. So ABC data is great for determining function. It's also great for looking at frequency and duration of behavior. But if you know the function, there's way easier ways to collect frequency, like a clicker. You know, you give the teacher a clicker or a counter. That is so much easier than having to write reams and reams of ABC data. So as soon as you know that function, ABC chart should be done and moving on to a different data collection system. And we talked about the antecedent being really, we just want to know what happened right before. Um, sometimes we will include on an ABC data sheet a setting event because um, we do understand that sometimes that does play a factor into the behaviors. So while the antecedent could have been a demand and the behavior was, you know, hitting somebody, 
if there's a setting event, like not sleeping, not eating or having a bad morning, that could affect how much that demand is going to trigger a behavior. So sometimes we will include a setting event on the ABC data sheet, and that's a good opportunity for the staff to kind of explain while well, they're having a bad day or they didn't sleep well, or this and this may have set them off that happened earlier in the day. So there is room to include some of that information, but in terms of the, the actual antecedent and behavior and consequence, those should be as brief as possible on the data sheet so that you can you know, really just at a glance, be able to read it and understand it and see the trend of that behavior. Um, sometimes it's also helpful to include the time of day or, you know, which activity, like even though it could be a demand, maybe it's only a math demand or maybe it's only in the evening. Um, so having that information about the time of day or what activity they were engaged in would also be helpful. Uh, it's interesting, you know, when I look at an ABC chart, I think about, and not only an ABC chart, but any data collection system, I really start backwards and go, well, what is it that I want to know? And for an ABC chart, yes, we want to know the function of behavior, but what else do you want to know? So for instance, you know, I was consulting to a little boy last week and he engages in this behavior where he puts his head down on a therapist's lap and just really curls up. And, you know, at first we thought that it was just an escape from demand. Um, but then once we noticed and we started tracking, sure, what you said, those setting events, we actually put in weather. Um, it seemed to be every time it was like a cloudy day or it was humid outside. Um, and then we uh, talked to his mom and his mom suffers from migraines. So we thought, oh, wow, look at this trend in behavior. It seems to be only happening during these really humid or cloudy days when it's about to rain. And that typically is when mom gets the migraines as well. So we actually, you know, gave her, asked my, you know, mom for permission. And we started giving this student uh, some Advil and you know what negative behavior went away like that. Um, so sometimes it's, yes, we want to know function and, you know, we think it's escape demand, but you know, if you're looking at sometimes the setting event, it could be something completely different. And, you know, something as simple as giving him something to relieve his headache behavior went away. So really keep that in mind as well. Um, sometimes if you know that the student's not eating well or sleeping well, you may want to target sleep, or you may want to target diet or eat a variety of food before you target any behavioral issues. Um, and that comes up in the setting events. And like Shira said, we sometimes include those setting events as well. Um, but that should just be a red flag if you're seeing students come in with either, you know, no lunch or they're coming in with really, you know, unhealthy foods or the same foods, you know, sometimes students come in with like all white things because that's all they'll eat. Um, you know, that does play a, you know, play a part in behavior as well. So really keeping that in mind. Yeah, and I like what you said, right? Our data are only as good as the decisions that we need to make from them. So collecting data for the sake of collecting data is not really our goal, but working backwards and thinking, what do I want to know? What information is gonna be helpful for me from this data? And then that helps you decide what form of data you're going to collect. Is it going to be helpful to know the time of day, the frequency, the duration, the antecedents? Um, and then that's how you can decide what to put in place and then working backwards. Sometimes you see that, you know, negative behavior only occurs, you know, when there's a demand placed. But then you look further and go, oh, it's only when there's a demand placed placed during math. Oh, okay. That should be a cue that your student is telling you something, right? It's not that they want to be engaging in these behaviors. They're telling you that they don't like the math or that the math is too hard, or maybe the math is too easy for them. Any, any way it goes, as soon as you see, okay, demand place, and it's typically during a certain subject, you can look at that and say, hey, that's my cue that I need to take a look at the curriculum and modify it. So ABC data is a really helpful form of data collection when we're looking at targeting a challenging behavior for reduction. And it gives us information for a couple of days when trying to figure out what the function is. Um, and then from there, we don't need to collect that ABC data anymore. We can move it to an easier data collection, but it does give us a lot of good information in a short amount of time as to why a behavior might be happening. And then gives us helps us understand how we can replace it and potentially decrease it. So people ask, you know, well, you've described what an ABC data sheet looks like, but how do I make one? Um, actually, we've just included one with this podcast. So there, um, we're giving out a free structured ABC checklist. Just click on the link uh, on or around this video to get your free structured ABC checklist.